Well, the turbulence in the Arab world has drawn the full attention of the American media. Riots and demonstrations in Libya and Bahrain are dominating the news channels at prime time and the newspaper front pages. Well, as RT's Lauren Lister reports, while U.S. leaders fly the flag for popular uprisings thousands of miles away, it's a very different story at home. These images of thousands protesting their government are reminiscent of the scenes we're seeing in Yemen or Bahrain or any of the Mideast protests inspired by Tunisia and on a larger scale Egypt, where the people's will, in many cases driven by workers' struggles, won out over ruling regimes. But these demonstrations are going on in the U.S. state of Wisconsin. Absolutely. Wisconsin is the new Egypt. There, workers are fighting to maintain their wages, benefits, and bargaining rights. Unions and their supporters have been standing up collectively for a week and counting against politicians proposing to take those rights away. This is one of the most incredible outpouring of energies we've seen since the Great Depression. And I think it could be the spark that could rebuild the labor movement in this country. But you wouldn't know it walking past a newsstand in the U.S. American newspapers feature the protests of other countries on their front pages. Right here, this is Bahrain. No mention of the 70,000 protesters right here on U.S. soil, except maybe a tiny sidebar dedicated to the people right here in America fighting for their rights. Fox done our lies. best to get Fox everybody lies. a voice. And American protesters challenged the story told by the most watched 24-hour U.S. news network in the country. Critics accuse Fox. Does it seem yes. like people are getting more and more aggressive? And I fear that there might be some conflict there. Of painting peaceful protesters as rioters and thugs. The safety of state lawmakers cannot be guaranteed. While it may be true the struggles people face from the Midwest to the Mideast, can't be painted with one broad brush. Because we do have a higher standard of living, uh, it's not as bad as what we're seeing overseas in the third world and developing world, uh, but it is a manifestation of the same global move. That manifestation is received very differently by U.S. press and politicians depending on where it's happening. American media that shared in the excitement of Egyptian protesters all day long in Cairo, the anticipation and excitement were growing. Villainize the ones in their own backyard. These protesters are, some of the signs aren't so nice, a little bit nasty. Are you feeling any aggression there on the ground? The president sided with the democratic demands of Egyptians on the street and called for this. Political, social and economic reforms that meet the aspirations of the Egyptian people. Meanwhile, at home... So on the day that the Egyptian military helped liberate the Egyptian people, we had the governor of Wisconsin threatening to call out the National Guard. Lawmakers in the U.S. were rallying the troops against protesters, and the top Republican in the U.S. derided their tactics, saying this was not a way to have an adult conversation. Egyptians seem to disagree. A prominent union leader pledged support for the Western workers in this video. And we watch the people of Egypt celebrate their triumph now. In Cairo, it was Victory Friday. A victory fought and won with support of the U.S. Once a battlefield, now a monument to their one week old freedom. Meanwhile, on the battlefield of working people right here in America, those fighting go largely undefended. Lauren Lister. RT, New York.